Um, I'm Madison Russell, and I'm going to introduce the Zachary Community School District SSEP experiment team. We have Alexis Albert, Grace Dry, Tyler Jackson, Jake O'Brien, me, Madison Russell, and Leanne Sorrell, and we would like to share our experiment with you. Our question was, what is the effect of microgravity on the development of murine myoblasts? Murine myoblasts. This is some background information on murine myoblasts. Murine refers to mice. Myoblasts are precursors to myocytes, which are also known as muscle cells. Myoblasts eventually fuse together, creating multinucleated fibers called myotubes, which form muscles. The formation of myotubes is called myogenesis. This slide will illustrate the process of myogenesis. Picture A is of an attached myoblast to a container surface. Picture B is of semi-confluency, and picture C is of confluency. When myoblasts become confluent, it basically means that they stretch out and form philopodia, which look a lot like arms. That's a philopodia. And picture D is the formation of myotubes. Our original experiment question was, what is the effect of microgravity on the development rate of murine myoblast? This question was a qualitative question, and we needed it to be a quantitative question, meaning we had something to measure. So our new question was, will the myoblast fuse to form myotubes at the same rate on Earth as they do in microgravity? We are now measuring if the myoblasts use the same amount of nutrients on Earth as they do in microgravity. The team hypothesized that the process of myogenesis would occur slower in microgravity. We began working with LSU and the Reproductive Biology Center in St. Gabriel. First, we met at the LSU Agriculture Center to pick up our myoblasts that were contained in liquid nitrogen. Then we drove to St. Gabriel at the Reproductive Biology Center, and we had to create the medium for our myoblasts to sit in. This medium was DMEM, 4.5 grams per liter of glucose, with 10% fetal bovine serum, and HEAPS. HEAPS control the pH levels in space. Re uh, sorry. Glucose gave the myoblast sugars, and the fetal bovine serum provided the myoblast with proteins to survive. Next, we took our myoblast out of the liquid nitrogen and warmed it up to body temperature. Then we plated them, added more medium, and put them in the incubator for a little while. After that time, we took them out and put them in a hemocytometer, which is used to count cells. We use a hemocytometer to calculate how many myoblasts per milliliter. Once we had that information, we were able to pack it up and ship it to Cape Canaveral. Before we sent our cells to Cape Canaveral, we took a trip to Dr. Lynn's lab and unpackaged our cells and act like NASA to see if our shipping method would work. So we unpacked our cells and we had success. It did work. So we you, pipetted some slides and looked at them on the microscope. It the microscope was called, called an inverted microscope where you can hook up a, pic, hook up a camera and take any uh, pictures of anything you want. After we got our results back, we had to see we yeah. we had to measure the glucose levels. We measured the glucose levels using a glucose meter. The results are on the slide. The more glucose that the cells used, the less glucose that the, oh, the less glucose that the cells that we that we would find. Our conclusion. Due to the variability of measurement, the team determined that there were no significant differences between the two samples. There were no big differences between the glucose intake levels, between the samples exposed to microgravity and those kept on Earth. Bacteria growth in the samples exposed to microgravity may have altered the results. The control samples were also compromised, had to be run at a different time in the experiment. They were prepared from a gr different group of cells. The control can only be used as a reliable comparison. To ensure validity of the observations, additional replicas of the experiment should be run. 
the bottom right picture is of a mild blast from our control samples. This picture is of a group of mild blasts from our space samples. This picture is of Bacillus, a type of bacteria that grew in our microgravity sample. And this is a myotube that formed in our space sample. The team is focused on successfully sending myoblasts into orbit and having them return. Any questions? Any questions? All right, thank you for a great presentation. Excellent work. Uh, if we have any questions, please come up to the microphone. A couple of quick questions. Well, uh, I'll ask the first one. We have a couple of people lined up. Uh, do you have any idea uh, why the samples were com contaminated uh, with the bacteria, where that might have come from? Is it just something that was in the environment or? Well, at first we didn't have an idea, but then we thought that maybe the company that we got the myoblast from, maybe they had been compromised then with bacteria, but it hadn't grown. If you could do this project again, they could do it differently, what would you change? Um, if we could do this project again and did everything exactly the same, we would add something called penicillin, and penicillin suppresses bacterial growth so that when we put it in there and we got our cells back, we could tell what happened to our cells and there wouldn't be any bacteria. And we would also use it, you let the same person do it since there were six different measurements, because there were six different people. Thank you again for a great presentation.